Hello everyone, my name is Thomas Pressler. Today we have a handful of gauges or gauge visuals available in Microsoft Power BI. Most of these are custom gauges. However, there is one thing in common between all of these gauges. That is, they offer very little flexibility. All gauges today have a fixed start and end angle, fixed direction, and many other features that are not so flexible. This has led to the development of the decometer. The decometer is the first gauge visual that offers the freedom to express yourself. More importantly, to tell the story that you want. To make this happen, we've exposed all elements of the decometer for you to configure as you please. What does this mean? Let's ask the creator of the decometer, Chama. Thank you, Thomas. Uh, let me answer that question with an example. Let's say that you are creating a dashboard for a 24-hour call center. And you may want to expose a lot of information in this dashboard, but just for this example, let's take a few of them. Um, I got Power BI Desktop already opened up here and some sample data imported. But before we proceed, let me fast forward to the end of this video so we can take a sneak peek at the sample dashboard we built during this video. You can see four instances of the tachometer visual being used with capability settings. Okay, let's rewind to just before where I interrupted. Let's take a look at the call volume for the past two and four hours to start with. Oh, I see. Here you can just show the call volume, but that's not going to convey any meaningful information. You're right. So you may want to show the call volume compared with the call center capacity. Yeah, but still, that is saying that you're running within capacity. So what? Okay, what you may want to do next is to show the threshold for what you would consider as the high load for your call center. You mean, you're still within capacity, but in a crunch situation that could burn out your staff if left for too long. Exactly. You can use range 3 start value for this. And most probably you may want this area to be colored red, which is the default color for range 3. Well, what about the opposite end? If your call volume is too low, how do you represent that? Well, this is where range 2 start comes into play. You can set your low load value to range 2 start. But now the colors are a bit confusing and don't make much sense to me. Well, I agree. I think you will want the area between low load and high load colored green and low load area maybe orange. Okay, now I like this. Intuitively, I will know by looking at this report that if we should stay in the green area or to take some action if we were to venture into the red or orange areas. But wait a minute. What if I want to know at what percent the capacity I'm running the call center now? Okay, let's display percentage. Now that's more like it. You see, in a typical call center, you have the customer support or tier one support. Tier one generally answers your questions, and if they can't resolve their issues, they escalate. Ideally, you would want your tier one to resolve most of the customer issues without escalating them. So, is there a way I can see how my tier one is doing now? Okay, let's add one more instance of the tachometer and show this. Let's show the number of customer queries resolved by tier one as the value. Let's set the end value to the call volume. Like before, you can define the ranges. You may have a predefined target for your tier one. You can show that as well. Now let's change the orientation and few other options a bit to make things a little more attractive and meaningful. I will also switch the colors between range 1 and range 3. Now let's add a couple more instances of the tachometer to show the customer satisfaction results for your call center. Here I want to represent the customer satisfaction and target as percentage values. I will set the dial to take the left semicircle this time. Now let me take a copy of this instance and change data values to show the customer satisfaction counts. This time I will change the orientation to occupy the opposite semicircle. Now let me complete this by customizing text sizes, positions, display options and range colors. Well that's it. Thank you Chama for walking us through that great example. So what can we expect next? Well, we got quite a few things lined up as improvements for the tachometer. Some things that we can share with you right now are we want to have tooltips, we want to have axis markings, and then we want to have the percentage values on the axis, just to name a few. Awesome! Now, as many of you uh, can figure out once you start using the, the tachometer, there are many more things that you can customize as you wish. So please, get in there, play around, and let us know your feedback.